I'm going to spend uh, about five minutes giving you a quick overview of the product. Then we're going to demonstrate um, some of the capabilities of the OS. So what is TI Artos? Firstly, it's a real-time operating system. And what it does, even though it's a new product, it takes a series of existing components that TI has been de delivering for about five to 10 years. We have the SysBIOS real-time kernel. We have the Stellarisware USB stack and peripheral drivers. And we also have uh, open source FAT FS file system. And we take those, we've taken all those components and basically put them together with a series of examples. We do integration testing, and we also have documentation. So instead of having to work out which version works with which, and how do I put, make the USB stack work with the file system and the mass storage class drive, we've got all that working together for you in pre-built examples. TI Artos is fully integrated with Co-Composer Studio, which is our MCU IDE. And we have a whole series of specialized tools, such as a Artos object view, so you can look at the state of your tasks, state of your semaphores. We also have a system analysis tool, which shows you a runtime data, such as context switching information, tasks, load, CPU load, all that kind of interesting stuff of working out kinks in a multi-threading application. And finally, a very important thing, of course, is it's completely free to use. So you get a free development license and free production licensing. And the sort and complete source code is provided with the product. So you can, if you've got a problem you're working out, is this in the OS or is it my application? You can you know, look at exactly what the OS is doing, exactly what your application is doing. So to uh, summarize exactly what we provide in the OS at the com component level, we have a two uh, core layers, which are the real-time kernel, which is our SysBIOS real-time kernel. Underneath that, we have a debug and instrumentation layer, which you can basically custom enable to see all kinds of logging data on the OS and the drivers. Then above the kernel, we have four pieces of middleware. We have an IP4 and IPv6 compliant TCP IP stack which includes a number of common network applications such as HTTP, DHCP, DNS. We also have USB, both host and device, with a series of class, common class drivers like HID for user interfaces, um, for um, mass storage, and also for CDC. Then finally, we have a FAT file system, which gives you basic ability to create files so you can exchange with a Windows OS. And then for our dual core M3 and uh, C28X devices, which are called the Concerto family, we have an IPC component which provides you very, very low overhead, fast uh, data and control information exchange between the M3 and the C28X core. Then finally, underneath the OS, we have a series of device drivers, things like UART and uh, USB EMAC. I squared C, and we'll be adding more in the future like SPY. And those are all, again, provided, everything's provided in full source code. It's all integration, integrated integration testing prior to shipping. Now, we're going to do a, a brief demo. I want to just overview the demo first for you. Uh, what this demo consists of, it's running on our dual core Concerto MCU, which has a C2000 core on one side which is really optimized for real-time control, especially motor control. And then on the other side, we have the ARM Cortex-M3, which provides a lot of general purpose connectivity and um, system control. Now, what we have here is we have the I squared C on the M3 is connected to uh, a temperature sensor um, card down there. Then the uh, EMAC is connected through to the PC and we're, we're running on the Cortex-M3, we're running our TCP IP stack, which is an HTTP server. And you'll see us, we'll be basically be reading the temperature off this uh, temperature sensor. Then quite unnecessarily, we send it across to the C2-8000 to convert it from, um, I think, Celsius to Fahrenheit, but we just want to show you some actual 
you know, both core usage. Then we then display the um, temperature on the browser along with some other UI, general UI features. And then in addition, we are using the uh, USB device and the CDC device storage class to stream runtime debug data off from the M3 onto the uh, co-composer studio via, via a virtual COM port. So at this point, I'm going to uh, start handing over to Agnes a bit, and she'll um, uh, switch out of PowerPoint, if you get out of PowerPoint there. And we'll bring up, if you bring out, first bring up the browser. So you see here we have, um, we're basically showing you the temperature, and we have a, a bottle of cold water here, and when we apply that to the temperature sensor, you should start seeing that, as you can see there, that, that those lines are dipping down in response to this very cold bottle of water. So there's a demonstration in real time that the temperature sensor is sensing this, and we're streaming that temperature information up to the HTTP server where you can demonstrate it, show it on your PC. So as you can see here, that it's a very, very good solution. If you're wanting to add some kind of nice uh, browser-based interface or display onto your microcontroller device, you can do that very easy with this operating system product combined with our devices. Now, um, now I want to show you a couple of the OS-specific uh, development tools inside of CCS. And you'll see here we've got this, um, so we've got all these OS events like semaphore posts, the tasks becoming ready, and we're basically streaming these OS events in real time. We basically buffer them up in a small buffer, and then we then pass them out over the USB up to this virtual COM port where they're displayed in the debugger interface. And so then, in addition, we have some uh, other kind of more graphical views. So we're going to show you the uh, task, uh, per task CPU load now. You see here, for each, obviously we're not doing very much, so we're, not, we're only taking up a few percent of the actual total CPU load. So when um, Agnes, um, she'll zoom in in a minute. Yeah, yeah, if you can zoom in to show us all the tasks. Yeah. Yeah, so here we are. So here we've got, um, you can see here we've got various tasks and they're color coded at the top of the screen. And you can see the CPU load of each task as it's executing over time. So, and we, we basically put a real a time stamp on here so you can, you know, look at the relationship of, you know, timing to uh, the actual CPU behavior. And if you can then, um, stop the CPU and show them the ROV. And then the, the, the other um, tool we have is something called the Runtime Object Viewer, where you can actually look at the individual status of things like task control blocks and semaphore control blocks. But, um, what this tool does here is this tool shows you the, it goes and statically, um, it queries the task control blocks down on the target. So you see, for example, you have, various, you have a basic display you have a detailed display. And the reason why we have that is it actually takes some time to go down and read all these objects on the target. And the detail view takes quite a long time to read. So we basically allow you to look at the, get the, some information quickly. And if you want more detailed information, you can do so. And you'll see, you can see which task is running, which task is blocked. Um, if, you want, if you want more detailed, detailed information, you can see which semaphore or which um, block, you know, which, um, why the task is blocked, the specific reason. And also we have various stack data, so we tell you the stack size, the stack base. We, we, we can also detect stack overflow because we instrument um, the memory above the stacks. And so if, if, we then, if you, your stack writes into that area, we'll then show you that you've actually had a stack overflow problem. So I'd like to thank you all for your time, and we'll be um, staying here for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes to answer more questions if you've got them. Thanks a lot.